All investments come with risks. So, what is risk? The actual return from an investment may be more or may be less than what you expected at the time you bought the product. This is the risk you take when investing. In other words, it is the uncertainty of payments from investments. Investment risk can refer to lower than expected returns. For example, it could be due to share price volatility or the underperformance of funds. It can also refer to the possibility of losing money invested. For example, when a bond issuer defaults on interest or principal payments. In some cases, you may lose all of the money you invested. Risks can be classified into two broad categories, market risk and specific risk. Market risk are risks that cannot be diversified away and is inherent in investing. They are caused by external factors out of the firm's or industry's control. This, for example, there could be changes in the economics, political and sociological environments which affect the prices of all marketable investments. There is little you can do to protect yourself against such risk. Examples of market risk are interest rates and inflation. Another term for market risk is systematic risk or non-diversifiable risk. Specific risks that are very specific to a company or a group of companies. It could be news about the company strategies, management errors, new product developments, and market innovations that impact on a company's earning potential. Such risks can be controlled and minimized by having a well-diversified portfolio which contains assets that are negatively or not correlated with each other. For example, what are possible market risks and specific risks for a global airline share? Market risks would include weak global stock markets. A general market downturn will adversely affect the airline share, even if the airline is doing well. A specific risk could be the loss of lucrative flight routes to the airline. The share may then be negatively affected even though the stock market in general is rising. The return on an investment is the gain or loss made on your investment when you sell it. Even if it is not sold, your return can be calculated by comparing the investment's market value against your purchase value. The total return from an investment is the sum of two components. Income, which is the interest or dividend payment in cash. When expressed as a percentage of the purchase price, it is known as the yield. Examples of income include interest you earn from a bank deposit, the coupon you receive from a bond, or the dividend payment from shares or unit trusts you hold, and capital gain or loss if you sell an asset at a higher or lower price than the price you originally paid when you bought it. For some assets such as bank deposits and bonds, the main component of total return will be income. For others, such as shares, it will be capital appreciation. In this example, you have bought 2,000 shares of XYZ at $1 a share for a total of $2,000. During the year, you received a dividend of $0.05 cents a share or total income of $100. You then sold your shares at $1.10 each for a total of $2,200. Your total return is then $100 income 
plus two hundred dollars capital appreciation over two thousand dollars times a hundred percent, and this will give you a total return of fifteen percent. When you invest, you expect a particular level of return. However, the actual return may differ from the expected return. Investing is based on expected returns. It is therefore important that you do not have unrealistic expectations. Take caution when arriving at your expected return on an investment. Was it the result of informed analysis? Or was it a tip from a friend, or a hunch? You should account for transaction costs and charges when computing your net returns, as these eat into your returns. There could be sales charges, management fees, brokerage charges, and other expenses, depending on the types of products you buy. There could also be financing or borrowing costs if you buy a product using margin or leverage. Using the previous example, the online trading fees were zero point two seven five percent of the contract value, or a minimum of twenty five dollars. Since zero point two seven five percent of two thousand dollars only cost five dollars and fifty cents, the minimum of twenty five dollars applies. Hence, for each buy and sell trade, your brokerage fees are twenty five times two, which is equal to fifty dollars. Hence, the net total return is three hundred minus fifty dollars over two thousand dollars times one hundred percent. This gives you a net return of twelve point five percent. Investments that offer higher returns also have higher risks. There is no free lunch in investing. In other words, if you are not willing to take risks, you have to be contented with lower returns. Conversely, if you want higher returns, you must be prepared to bear more risks. The diagram shows that investment instruments can be ranked by their risk-return profile, starting with instruments that have both low expected return and low risk, such as cash and deposits, and moving through to those with higher expected returns but correspondingly higher risk, such as stocks and shares. You can invest to achieve a return on your money. Your decision on investment boils down to considering the risk-return trade-off for each investment. The risk-return trade-off has a practical implication on investing. It is usually the case for us to put our focus on returns when considering any investment. However, it is good to remember. That the price or the trade-off for higher potential return is higher risk. The question to ask yourself before committing to an investment that can give potentially higher returns is: Can I afford to lose a significant amount of money? On the other hand, if your concern is risk, you may feel that a product that is capital guaranteed may be suitable for you. Again. Be aware of the trade-off. That is, the price of the guarantee in this case is likely to be the returns over an investment cycle that are lower versus comparable alternative products that do not contain a guarantee. It may also not offer you returns that can hedge against the inflation rate. Thus, the question now is: Should I take more risk with my investments?